Hello everybody, uh, thank you for joining this quick uh, tutorial on Scratch. Uh, today I'm going to uh, show you the very basics of Scratch. And I know all of you play game, different games and play with applications, but how many of you can make a game and make an application? So Scratch is one of the program that will allow you to make your own games and animations. Uh, and Today, I, I'm, I'm going to start with a quick sample project that I did. So I'm going to go to File and Open. There's a dance. This is the Dance Party project. So let's see what kind of projects we can create in Scratch. And then we will go uh, in depth. So this is a dance animation that I created with a techno music uh, and uh, you can see the different characters dancing so you know it, it can goes on for a while but you get the idea of how this program works I'm gonna go ahead and stop it. I'm gonna go back to my uh, interface. And so that's, this is a pretty complicated project and it was actually done by uh, uh, the MIT group who invented this uh, Scratch program. And these are all the different codes that they did to uh, make these different characters dance. But but today we'll just do a very uh, simple animation. So I'm gonna go to File and New. And this is how the Scratch interface looks like. On the right, you have the stage where your characters will perform. Here, you're gonna put all your scripts. And on the left, you have the different methods that your characters can do. So for example, the motion block has different methods. So if I drag the move block over here, and if I click on this, you can see that the cat is moving 10 steps. If I drag the turn block and click on this, you can see that the cat is turning. I can also snap these blocks together. And now if I click on this, you can see that the cat is moving and turning 15 degrees. So similarly, you have looks, so you can make the cat do something. So if I click on Say hello for two seconds, the cat is gonna do that, right? And then you have sound, which can, and you can use that to make the cat uh, say something. So if I click on this, the cat is doing a sound. You also have pen block, which, which you can use to make the cat draw something. So for example, I can drag this pen down and if I click on this, you can see that the cat is moving and making that, uh, making that line. So I'm gonna clear that up. And the control block are usually used to uh, control your character. And I'll show you an example of that later on. Sensing is mostly used by users who are making games. Operators is usually used by users when they're keeping track of scores in a game, and you can also make variables. And I'll give you an example of all these in a more uh, in-depth discussion in other tutorials. But let's go ahead and make, uh, make a new project from scratch. So what I'm gonna do in this program is I'm gonna make this cat move. So I'm gonna go to motion, and I'm gonna drag this move 10 steps. So it's moving. Now if I if I go, I can go to the control button and I can also drag this close stop and uh, I can put these two blocks on top of each other. What this basically says is that when the green flag is clicked, move 10 steps. So if, if I click on this green flag, the cat is gonna move 10 steps. So usually all these, the, the control blocks have closed stops. So you usually want to start your program with a closed stop. And, uh, and then uh, drag and drop the other blocks. Uh, 
so now my cat is uh, moving 10 steps. Now I want to drag this forever block and I want to snap it uh, in uh, on uh, under the uh, when uh, when flag clicked block and usually you know uh, when you see that white bar it means that you can snap these blocks together so now if I click on the green flag the cat is actually moving forever right so one thing that you noticed so I'm going to stop this is that the cat is actually disappearing uh, behind that boundary so to stop doing that, I can go to motion again. There's a block called if on edge bounce. So if I snap this underneath the move 10 steps, now if I click on this, you can see that the cat is actually moving. And when it goes to the boundary, it's bouncing back. So I have already created a few lines of code over here. But one problem with this motion is that the cat is becoming upside down. So how do I fix that? All I have to do is go here and click on this icon, which says only face left to right. And once I do that, my cat is doing a nice left to right motion. Now, one problem with this cat is that it's not making a very natural walking movement. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to looks and there's a button called switch. I mean, a block called switch costume. So you can drag this over here and there are different costumes, right? Costume basically means the different uh, position of the cat. So if I click on costume one, you can, uh, this is the cat's costume one position. If I click on costume two, you can click on this. You can see that the cat made, have, have a diff the cat has a different movement for the leg. And then if I go to costume one and click on this block, you can see that she is changing her movement. So what I can do is I can drag this and snap it under this block. Now let's see how that works. So now you can see that it's in costume one. If I change this to costume two, you can see that this is how it's going to look like in costume two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch back and forth between the two costumes to make a very realistic move. So I'm going to snap this underneath and I'm going to say drag between costume two and costume one. Now, if I do that, you can see that it kind of makes a bit more realistic move, but it's making these walking movements so fast that it doesn't look as good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to control and I'm going to put this wait button in between these two blocks so that her walking movement seems more realistic. So she's going to do one move. She's going to wait a few. She's going to wait maybe for 0.1 or 2 seconds. And then she's going to go to the second costume. Now you can see that her walking movement is much more realistic. One thing about this uh, background is that I have a very boring background, a white background, right? So what I can do is I can go to stage and I can switch the backgrounds. So I'm going to click on background, import. There are different backgrounds here. I'm going to nature and uh, let's choose this one, like a dessert. So here you can see the background kind of changed to uh, to a much more nicer background. So now if I click on the green flag, you can see that the cat is making its different motion. If you want, you can uh, click on the sprite again. Actually, these characters are called sprite uh, in Scratch. You can go to sound. Actually, you can go to looks and click on scripts and you can drag this block and see, I see that white button, uh, a white uh, line over there. That means you can snap it over there. You can say that I, I am going to walk in the desert for maybe three seconds. 
and now she's gonna say that and then she's gonna do her movements so this is a very quick example of how scratch works in the later tutorials we are gonna do much more uh, interesting stuff than this but the question to educators is you know what exactly are the kids or your students learning from this program so basically this scratch can teach a lot of different things to the students and one thing is uh, so let me write this down over here so from this simple introduction that I showed you your students learned about loops they learned about sequence they learned about event trigger right so these are some computers so for example you can see that you know the forever block taught them about loops they are also snapping all these different blocks uh, on top of each other and creating a sequence to make their program work they're also using this control button to uh, they're also using this control button to uh, so when green flag is clicked that's a control button and that's some sort of event trigger so they are also learning event trigger over here so you know this this scratch program may look like a toy but actually it can be taught to kids as little as six or seven years old to even high school students and different complicated programs can be created from scratch based on uh, the student's level of expertise but this program teaches many different kinds of computer science concepts in a more subtle manner and in a very interesting uh, environment so that's it for today in the next tutorial we are gonna dig deep uh, we're gonna have more uh, in-depth discussion about the these different blocks so thank you very much and see you soon